goodness. This seems to be the, the, the buzzword, doesn't it, at the moment, is, is, is sugar-free. Uh, we've been reading so many bad things about it. It, it. it can cause cancer. It obviously it can lead towards, you know, type 2 diabetes. Is sugar this big, bad demon that we've been building it up to be? It is and it isn't. It's really in context that we have to look at it. And it's really around our whole diet yeah. as well. So, you know, I know we're doing the program Sugar Free Farm, but yeah. actually most people habitually eat a certain way. And actually sugar is addictive. Refined sugar, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. We're not talking about the sugar in fruit. We're not talking about those natural sugars. Yes. Even though we do omit those in the program, but <laughs> people see that tonight. Well, that, I think that's to shock your body to start off with, and then gradually you can get back to a rather more normal but a healthier lifestyle. Well, actually, when people are eating a lot of refined sugars, you can't actually taste your foods, and so you lose lose that enjoyment and people are just eating. Yeah. And it was interesting, and I was listening to what yeah, you were saying we, before. We know each other of old, because uh, you've given me some nutrition advice yeah, in the previously. past. Previously, but yeah. what you were saying was absolutely key around the psychology of eating and people's relationships with food. Um, and that's the key for any change, actually, in, in you know, any kind of uh, process with regards to changing your diet, changing the way that you drink, because most things that we do as human beings habitual yeah mm -hmm. it's just a matter of changing a habit now we kept an eye on your habit for the past was it four days you kept yes. a food diary yeah but look, can i just say in my defense i was away for the weekend with yeah. my husband and the kids and that <laughs> so i wasn't cooking at home i was eating out a lot Okay. okay, there's your defence. <laughs> Paula, what did you make of it? Well, actually, interestingly, I mean, that is correct. I mean, when we, when we go away, when it's holiday, birthdays, what have you, people do eat di differently, and that's fine. It's what we do most of the time that really has an effect. Okay. And most of the time, Linda likes her wine. Okay, and Every that night. actually, <laughs> and, and that actually is where the issue is. Her food, yes, we can tweak that, and yes, um, we can make changes to her diet to improve that. But it's actually the sugar in the alcohol, and actually even more than the sugar in the alcohol, it's the effect that that alcohol has on your health. That's that's really what we're talking so about. So we, basically, we asked you to keep a food diary for for four days, so we could get some kind of indicator of of as your as your diet in a natural environment. Yeah, I mean, yeah. obviously you're away, but it's, yeah. it's still pretty much what you what you would eat. What we then did is we've sort of taken your your average amount of sugar content. That's not only the wine, but th through food oh. as well, and we've extended it just to show your annual sugar consumption. Can yeah, I reveal exactly. this now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Right, Linda, uh, this, on this table here, we couldn't fit it all on. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> that's that's ominous. <laughs> this is the equivalent to one month's worth of one sugar. One month? This I is thought you said annual. Yes, really? but we couldn't fit all that on, Linda. This is a month's worth of sugar. Ready? Oh, oh my God. I don't even like cakes or sugar or anything. <laughs> but that's what it's equivalent to. And, and if you think about your, your wine in terms of calories, it's equivalent of to that, 100 donuts. A month? Yeah. That's a month's worth That's of wine. A month. What about if we cut it in half? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but isn't God. that interesting? Because your first reaction was, well, I wouldn't eat all them. I don't eat anything. But it's sweet having the same impact on your body. As well, that, I know, yeah. That, and that, that is true, actually. Linda doesn't have a naturally sweet tooth, and there isn't an awful lot of refined sugars in her diet. Yes, okay, there's um, white bread and bagels, but that's probably because you were away. Um, yeah. But it is what it equates to, and actually, when we, we break it down, I mean, you would ne well, you probably never. wouldn't even I get wouldn't even one. one of them. Exactly. Know, yeah. So, you know, it's putting it in context and it kind of, you know, takes the... It's the hidden sugars it's as well. The hidden I eat sugars. the little pots of porridge every day and apparently they're full of sugar as well. Yeah. So is this just sort of from looking at the food diary or have you had an actual blood test as well to look at the sugars oh, in yes, your blood? One of them. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't done it at this stage, but actually that is what I would recommend everybody to do as an MOT because often it's the silent... Um, you know, triggers yeah. that we're we not aware of. Yeah. And there is a condition called pre-diabetes as well, which um, you can change with lifestyle and exercise, which we want to ensure that people you know, don't end up with... That's the one that would lead to diabetes that, too, yeah, the lifestyle. Can do. One, yeah, yeah. There, is no di um, there is no guarantee that that wouldn't still happen, but with lifestyle changes and changing your diet, you can actively change that diagnosis. We get some pretty fabulous guests here on Loose Women. There's plenty more where that came from. Just click here to watch more interviews with a whole range of famous faces. And click here to subscribe. It's free, so you'd be silly not to, really.